Hello everyone, this is Whitney Freya, and I um, am painting a mandala painting, and we are doing mandala paintings in my Super Soul Flow program right now. So I thought I would do a little open studio um, where I would share with you my mandala painting practice or process for now, and um, invite people to join me um, to show me what mandala paintings you are painting as well. I have been um, creating mandalas either in my art journal or on the canvas um, for years now, um, for probably 12, 15 years. And um, what I love about them is that whenever I create a mandala, it really does bring me to my own center. And so whatever kind of hectic nature I've just um, come out of in the art that is my life or things that I'm dealing with, when I sit down to do a mandala, it really creates this energy of grounding and centering and peace. And I feel so relaxed after creating a mandala. So um, how does it get any better than that, right? So um, I am just going to work on this mandala. Um, I'm actually going to do kind of a double mandala. This is a great example of a first layer. I'm, I'm visiting a friend of mine <clears throat> excuse me, in Portland, I'm actually on her floating house on the Willamette River. Let me see if I can show you. Can you see? Look, that's the river. That's like her backyard. How cool is that? So um, this is a canvas that her and I and some of our friends played with out on that dock like two summers ago. And um, so this is a perfect example of a first layer. It's just play, 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 but it's perfectly ready for a double mandala painting. I'm going to create a mandala here and then another one over here, and we're just going to see what happens when the two connect or overlap. Um, this is a um, mandala painting that I just created uh, for the Super Soul Flow program as part of my personal painting practice. So I'll get nice and close. I feel like some people in the program have maybe gotten a little. Um, it becomes less than soothing because they're trying to make things perfectly symmetrical or especially with the paintings for some reason when they're in just kind of the first outline stage I know I always get to the point where I feel like um, it's looking a little elementary and I want it to look you know like this crazy amazing intricate mandala and that doesn't happen surprise surprise until the final details so, for example, uh, when I first paint this, and I have a blog post on my Nexus site that shows all this step by step. So, just message me um, if you want to learn how to access that. But um, so, say these shapes were the initial outline, but can you see like how many different times I echoed even just this line right here, right? Um, so, there was the underlayer, which is like what we have here, for example. And then um, I painted a darker blue, then a lighter blue, lighter blue out here with this pink here. And then I did it a little differently all around that one shape. Um, and these shapes here initially were just this circular outline with the first layer showing through. And I added the pink here and then the purple here. And there's um, lighter purple and yellow and then white and then orange. And what's fun about this is you don't have to complete this in one sitting. Part of the painting practice that we are all developing in the Super Soul Flow program is that the canvas is where you go for 10 minutes at a time, 20 minutes at a time to connect. It's a meditative practice. They've proven um, that uh, creative and meditative activity produces the same brain waves. So for those of us who are doers, 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 actually doing something to get to the meditative state is easier than going from doing, doing, doing to sitting there doing nothing. It's all good. I try and meditate daily. I meditate probably three, four times a week, if I'm honest. And, um, and in the best meditations come when I do sit for 30 to 40 minutes to an hour because it takes that long for me to detach from the monkey mind. I'm an idea person. I'm like, 
plagued with ideas. So it takes me a long time to stop the ideas. It's actually quicker for me to um, just become totally present when I'm painting than when I'm meditating. But I get something different from a really good meditation. Really yummy. So I recommend both, of course. Um, but the painting is a process and it's layers. So you can do this first layer any old time. Then you can outline your mandala design one day. The next time you make it back to your painting practice, you start filling in. And maybe it's five or six painting practice sessions later that you get to all this fun detail. And that's when the mandala starts to look yummy. It doesn't look yummy in those early layers. Okay. So um, what I started to do here, um, I want to make sure you could see, is right here, there was um, already this kind of spiral design, which is begging to be a mandala, of course. And then, um, uh, and then I just drew kind of a grid very lightly in this dark paint so that you could see it. If I was doing this not on video, maybe I would use white or a color that might blend in more. But I'm giving myself kind of a guide. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. So I think I'll, I'll start here so you guys can see um, maybe better. And the idea was, I know some of you, there are a couple people watching. Um, and I don't know, last time I did this, I could see your faces when you popped up here. Um, you can't see it on the video, but I can give uh, control over to you if, and in the future for these open studios, if you're working on a painting, a mandala painting or whatever painting we're doing or any painting you're doing that's different, um, I would love to share and um, have you share your process. And if you have any questions, like a lot of times people are asking me questions about layering or shading, blending the colors. Um, I love to help with that. And if any of you have worked with me before, you know this. If you haven't, I am a creative muse. I am here to give you a vehicle, um, a modality, a tool that you can use to connect to a whole different level of awareness that is meant to balance our logical mind, our linear mind. And um, that is your right hemisphere, your intuitive thinking, your infinite mind. Painting is what I use, what I have found the most effective, one, in accessing that intuitive infinite awareness, that unconscious mind that can pull from like an ocean. Um, Carl Jung compared the conscious mind, your logical linear mind, to the size of a wine cork and your unconscious mind to the size of the entire ocean. So if you are living in the modern world and ever have questions or problems or anything that you want deeper insight to, you can choose to pull from your wine cork of knowledge, things that you've learned or read or heard or been taught, or you can choose to also, not an either or, also access the ocean of wisdom that you have available to you. The canvas is the portal to that ocean of um, potential and information that you can access at any point. The second reason I use the canvas um, to bring you to this expanded sense of self and possibility is because the metaphor of the blank canvas absolutely mirrors our life. So the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And ultimately, we are here to live as creators. Um, in the Super Soul Flow program, our intention is to align with the statement, I am the sole creator of my experience. So when we do creative activity, we're actually absolutely mirroring how we create in the art that is our life, how we create change. If you have any newness, a new skill you want to learn, a new experience you want to have, a new business you want to start, um, a new way to approach a relationship with someone in your life, it's going to take your creative ability. And whatever is keeping you from where you want to be, so if in anywhere in your life you are not feeling joyful and happy and, and just blissful, um, that is because there is some change that you're being invited to make, um, a new perspective, a new approach, or um, kind of coming at it from a different angle. And that's going to take going into some kind of new territory. Well, your 
biological mind, which is the mind that is stimulated for most of our lives, um, can only pull from what you already know. And it is fear-based. It is literally physiologically programmed to resist any and all change. Elizabeth Lesser writes about this in her book, Broken Open. And she said, the source of all human suffering is resistance to change. Our left brain is always going to be protecting us from any unknown situation, even if it's just calling somebody to inquire about a new job or taking a new class or creating on the blank canvas. The reality is, is that we have this whole other hemisphere that is completely fearless, that is infinite and knows nothing but love and believes that everything's working out perfectly. So it is there to balance. Now, if you're asking, should I jump off a cliff into the boiling, you know, hot lava volcano, you want your left brain chiming in saying, uh, no. If you're asking, should I paint a mandala and hop on the Google Hangout with Whitney Freya, your left brain's like, that's not really my department because this is not life or death. You want to ask the right hemisphere. Right hemisphere is like, yes, please do. Because when you do that, when you engage your mind with color and imagery and pattern and symbol, it's like changing the radio dial in your head and tuning into that ocean rather than the wine cork. Okay? They're both valuable, but we all have both of these, and we're living a little out of balance. Okay? So I could talk forever. If you know me, you probably listen to me talk a lot, um, and I love to talk, but what I love more is taking action. So um, sometimes all the talk keeps us from taking action, right? How many times have you found yourself, I talk about this all the time, but I haven't done anything. Wow, maybe I should do something. I'm going to do that right now. So. Um, you can put on your background music, maybe, or something, and, um, and let's just kind of get started. I don't always grid out um, my mandalas this way, but I think it's a really good tool to have. And our logical mind likes symmetry, so it's about creating a bridge. So we need to understand that our logical mind is going to start saying things like, um, wow, you really need to, you know, dig that compost into your garden, that thing you've been procrastinating, but now all of a sudden sounds really attractive because your left brain's trying to keep you from this unknown thing. Um, so we, it's important to recognize that it takes a moment of transition to get from left brain to right brain. Um, so once I have this, I'm going to go ahead and create another circle. It doesn't actually matter if it's symmetrical or not. right? Um, and so I'm going to paint a circle. And then I'm just going to do the lotus petal design. And I'm going to do it right using these other outlines as a guide. These aren't even symmetrical, but. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that um, these thick outlines are totally fine because as we paint. Um, over, we're going to paint over these lines too, so we're going to make them thinner. Sometimes people get stuck right there. Oh, see, my lines are so fat, I'm not good at this, so I'm just going to stop. We can make the lines thinner, trust me. One of those myths that those perfect thin lines are what exist from the beginning. So this is, there's the first step of my mandala. Now let's see, over here, I'll do something a little different. So, flower petal. Notice how um, quickly we want to make our paintings like really important as if this painting is going to bring you financial independence or solve world hunger or something. It's just a canvas. And um, as we can see, you can paint over and over this one canvas the rest of your life. In the Super Soul Flow program, which you can learn more about at WhitneyFreya.com, I'm sure I'll post a link underneath there if you're watching the recording, um, we're creating a personal painting practice. And we can have canvases that we end up hanging up on the wall. I love that. And 
you can have your meditation canvas that is something that you just paint over and over and over. Really lovely. Okay. Um, another thing with the mandalas is um, when you start, you can keep this first outline that like I'm doing with the dark, keep the shapes nice and big. Don't start with these little minute shapes. We'll add those later. Okay. Um, so we want to keep it easy. We can make things really difficult, really easy. Right. Um, so now, because you no, know, I love circles, I'm going to put circles in here. Personally, I love the fact that I'm doing these two mandalas that are not right in the middle um, or even on both sides. Um, for some of you, that may make you a little nervous, and it's totally okay to do a big one in the middle. It just seemed like this one wanted these two like this, so I thought I'd try it. And it gives me an opportunity to demonstrate two different designs for you. But again, recognize all the little ways that your left brain tries to keep you on its side. And your left brain is really quite overworked. So it's fine to give yourself something to do that has nothing to do with left brain. OK. Um, so see, these lines just kind of help. <laughs> help know where to go. So once we get something outlined, then start coloring in. And it's nice if you're using dark paint to end up with um, the paint dry before you start coloring in. And then just keep adding until I think some of it's dry. If you've um if you're someone who's never painted before I'm so glad you're here and i want you to know that you'll probably experience the most dramatic kind of breakthroughs and ahas and feelings of relaxation and new possibility because you're going to do something that's totally unrelated to your normal pattern or routine and that's when we get new ideas when we do things really differently so um so i actually love working my one-on-one, um, -on -one, my VIP days, um, and my coaches, my coaching training. Uh, when people tell me that they've never really painted before, uh, you know, but some of them have dabbled in this or that. A lot of them are life coaches or business coaches or have done some sort of counseling therapy type work. So they're really excited to empower people and they understand the connection between creativity and personal empowerment. So they do the coaching training to be able to bring that to their clients. And I love it when they have never painted because then they can tell their clients, I had never painted either up until however many months ago or years ago. And it, it gives people permission. Okay, well, I haven't painted either, but since you had never painted before, then I can do it too. Okay. So you guys see the mandala is basically this spiraling, circular, repetitive pattern of shape. Mandala is one of the oldest. Um, it actually, in this book I just bought, I'll show you, I found it at Powell's, um, Mandalas of the World. It talks about how the symbol that is the mandala really goes absolutely beyond time because the um, universe is shaped like a mandala. The Milky Way, our galaxy, um, the Big Bang was a mandala. Um, the way we're constantly expanding is a mandala. Cells are mandalas, the earth is a mandala, stars are mandalas, the sun is a mandala. So this is kind of like the building block. If you've read um, or seen any of Masuro Emoto, Masuro Emoto, and um, he's the guy who did the work with water crystals and how water crystals change shape when exposed to like loving thoughts as opposed to angry thoughts. Um, and when they're exposed to beautiful you know, um, classical music, thoughts of love, harmony, and peace, they turn into these amazing mandalas. And when they're polluted or exposed to, um, no offense, but heavy metal music, I'm all about 
heavy metal fans, but heavy metal music, it, um, it creates like this kind of disjointed, unharmonious looking um, a design in the water. And how much water are we, right? So you are made up of a mandala. Um, okay. So let's just expand this one out a little more. Remember I said, don't be afraid to do really big shapes to start with. We'll make them more, um, a little more detailed towards the end. I'm curious to see, and I'm comfortable with the unknown, how these two kind of merge together. They're looking somewhat related, right? Okay, so here's another, when you don't know what to do next, or you could just go and go and go. Paint the circle. I think some people have been expressing that they get a little stressed out, you know, when things aren't going exactly as they planned, which, hello, art, life, connection, sometimes that happens, right? Things don't go according to plan. In fact, a lot of times they don't go according to plan. So the trick is to stay in a creative mindset. What else is possible, right? Um, but just drawing a circle around this, you see how that just kind of pulled it together, right? So now I'm going to do, kind of for every, do a nice big lotus petal. I love this lotus petal shape. And actually painting on a bigger canvas, I'm realizing, is a lot easier. I mean, I'm not just realizing that right now, but even with the mandala, like painting on this little one, you know, is not really as much fun as painting big like this. So um, most people, when they start painting, you know, they're feeling like, to play it safe, they need to stay small. And actually, it's the opposite. Um, it's like um, a friend, Stephanie Babaro, just reminded me about singing. They say if you can't sing, which or have yet to learn to sing, like me, um, that you just want to sing louder. When you do sing, you just want to sing louder. I believe that. Because it's all energy. When we're scared, what do we do? We hold back. I'm going to paint small, keep it safe. And the reality is painting big is easier. Singing louder, and, and I'm not brave enough to test that right now. I'm not going to start singing to you. <laughs> but singing louder is going to make you sound better. OK. I love this. I'm not afraid to sing. <laughs> Just repeating you know, shapes. And so some of these circles, it's like, okay, I want to reach out and connect them to the edge there. And then as I go through, I may add detail in there. But for right now, that's good. So I'm going to start kind of filling in some color so you guys can see this. There are five of you on here. Hi, but I can't see you. So probably a button I need to press. I don't want to sit here. Um, That's not it. There is a screen share button here. Capture. Cameraman. Control room. It's weird. We just did a Google Hangout a couple days ago, and I could see all your faces down here. So if you guys see a button, show me on screen or something. That would be lovely. Just because I want to see you. OK, so we're painting a mandala. Painting two mandalas. So now I have um, my friend's fancy plastic palette. I normally use meat trays, frankly, because um, then I don't have to clean them up. I don't have to clean them. Paper plates work really well. Um, so again, I'm going to keep it simple. And I'm going to understand that this, um, so this kind of doodling is the first layer. The second layer 
is the outline. This is how myself and all the Creatively Fit coaches teach PD Made Easy. The layers help you stay present in the moment. Um, so now the third layer is filling in the spaces I've created, and, um, and I'm going to keep adding to that. Okay? Um, you can always come say hi, Michelle. This is Michelle, the owner of the Fluid Hat. <laughs> oh, oh, she started her dog barking. <laughs> okay, so I'm digging the yellow here. So I am going to emphasize that. So if you don't know where to start, a great place to start is like, what, what do you like? And um, I was liking that yellow. When we're going over the um, these outlines, like I mentioned, we were going to make them thinner. It's important to simply um, kind of go with the grain, right? So I wouldn't paint like this into a circle. I'm always going to be painting in a circular pattern in a circle, okay? And then uh, maybe so you guys can see it better. Let's go with this cerulean blue. One of my favorite colors. And I'm not even cleaning my brush in between because blue and Yellow mixed together just fine. I've got my paint pants on, but I'm not sure I really want that under all of them. It's pretty much empty. And you don't have to cover the whole sheet. We can leave some of that first layer coming through, which is the beauty of having a really fun first layer. So our mantra for the first layer is, the more you play, the easier it is. So you play hard with all these good drips in the first layer, it makes the next layers easier. The other fun thing to do with mandalas is to not, um, not concern yourself with mixing, doing the same exact shade all around so I'm going to add some magenta into this now to get kind of a purpley color so that all my lotus petals are not changing. And then if I decide I want them to be the same color, I can do that, but I don't have to decide that right now. So that's that's a beginning, and now you get to just keep going with this filling in, okay? And then when these are dry, I'll go back with um, either a different shade of that color if I'm digging it, or maybe a totally different shade, um, and then you just keep adding, keep adding the detail. Now, another super fun thing to do with your mandalas is to um, paint underneath, like in this first layer. Um, go ahead and paint, or with a pencil, or whatever you want, um, paint words that are symbolic of what you want more of, what you want to create into your life. Um, mandalas have been used um, a lot by people um, to manifesting mandalas. So they put in the center things that next to my bed at home that shows um, has visions that are attached to my kids, attached to my travel, attached to my business, and it's um, just drawings of all these things in a mandala with these lotus petals around it. And by putting a circle around it, supposedly it makes it more potent, right? And um, why not? Might as well put your, like you could do your next vision board in a circle. More mandalas, sauerkraut. Was that my sauerkraut? Or? No. Yeah, we need like. Someday, you know, when we get to, when instead of watching um, 
instead of watching uh, Bob Ross, right? But there should be the teacher that instead of just Bob Ross, you know, it could be me one day, it could be Michelle one day, it could be you one day, it could be Tora Bully one day, it could be Pixie Lighthorse one day. How fun would that be? Um, and Bob Ross, but I think we're ready for. I don't think Bob ever did mandalas, but this is still your happy place here. <laughs> Meet your happy mandala. Ooh, I'm liking this color. You get um kind of fun, unexpected colors when you don't totally clean your brush. So I'm always trying to get the excess paint off my brush. Isn't that disappointing? Something goldish. Um, so you get most of the paint off your brush, but not all of it. And then um, you end up with colors that you would never mix logically because you don't even know they exist. Okay. You guys excited to paint your mandalas? I know you are now. Um, I'm not sure how much time I'm going to get in this video. I was really expecting to be able to converse with you guys. Michelle, no one, they're there, but they're not showing up on the screen, so I can't talk with you guys. That's what I wanted to do, so I'll be curious to hear. Oh, that was dry. Okay, so let me try and show you. That looks cool, doesn't it? Um, let me try and show you how to make some of this maybe more interesting. Okay, so let me give you an example of how you might add in um, detail. My camera is bad. Right. Let's see how the never forget the other end of your brush. So let me just show you what I did here. Actually, I'm not really in love with this part. So, fingers are always a good thing. Oh, that was fun. Let's see if I can show this to you. You know, I scratched in the middle there with the end of the brush. It's the little things that get me pretty excited. Okay. And then I added just some lighter blue to that. Okay. Um, do you see how the outlines are getting narrower and narrower? For some of you, what you're going to get out of this video is like, okay, so hers doesn't look perfect right away either. <laughs> so I was just expecting my mandala to go from kind of zero to 100 um, without allowing it the, the time to do that. And? That's okay, now you know. It's a lot easier to be objective about other people's stuff. Right? That is a fact. Okay, so it's starting to look like a mandala. So what I will do is I will post on um, Nexus, which is where Super Soul Flow is happening. 
who might be watching this. And I'll, um, I'll put it on the wall and I'll put it in the lesson. And then for those of you just joining on Google, I'll post this. Um, other things I'm going to be doing today, so it might not be immediately. You know, here's the thing, right? Life is a process. Thank goodness, right? Because if it wasn't, I mean, what would that be like? <laughs> we would just be born and instantly go away. Like, life is a process. We are all works in progress, right? just like the canvas. It's never just done. It doesn't have to ever be done. So be careful if you catch yourself getting impatient because it doesn't feel done or it doesn't feel good enough. I mean, what is good enough? I mean, for most of us, myself included, if someone said you can paint and have fun and relax and find peace and new insight and um, inspiration, or you can paint and sell it, I mean, I would rather paint for the emotional, spiritual benefits than not enjoy it like that and just create product. Um, I've been in this song, teaching people and bringing them to the canvas for 19 years. And I've sold paintings, but usually if someone asks me, I have paintings for sale on my website, and I do get commissions, but if someone wants to commission me to do something, usually my first question is, what if I taught you how to paint that painting? In my VIP days, um, you can Go to the website under events and find the VIP days, and um, you can submit uh, your name and email so I can send you more information because there's a lot. But in my VIP days, what we do is we take like your office or your bedroom or a significant room, we take everything down, we put up blank canvases, um, we uh, you know decide, call in the energy that you want in that space. I help you create those paintings. And then in a couple of weeks' time, between the before and after the VIP day, you're sitting in a space that's vibrating with things, symbols of what you want that you created. It is such a powerful energy shift. You learn how to paint. You get over any inhibitions or doubt around your creative abilities. It gives you hope. It empowers your dreams. And then it's this constant energetic reminder. It like changes the energetic landscape of wherever you are um, spending your time. And that is just absolutely transformational. Personal breakthroughs, professional breakthroughs, um, new tools to use with your clients if you're a coach. It's, it's absolutely amazing. So I would much rather empower you to experience the joy I get from doing this than simply sell art. Nothing wrong with that, that's just the way I'm programmed. So if you want more information, please go to WhitneyBrea, F-R-E-Y-A dot com. And then the way I um, kind of create this background in here is by echoing the shapes I already have or creating new shapes. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I might have to take it to Ashland to the workshop and then bring it back. <laughs> okay. I can keep I'm okay with that. It. <laughs> okay, let's refinish it while I'm here. Maybe we can do like that. Looking kind of rose window, isn't it? Dish. I love you got you can't. Enough. Let us go. Okay, so here's it. So 
yellow on the finger. Let's just go around and make it nice and sunny. You guys see that? You kind of can. I mean, here's the thing. It doesn't matter. Do anything. Like just play and, and watch yourself how you get so serious. I gotta make this good. No, you don't. You don't. I'm not gonna pop into your space and be like, I don't know, you don't have any talent. You really shouldn't be doing this. That's not gonna happen. It's not gonna reach out and burn you or grab you or bite you or cut you. Um, it's just to have fun and to connect. As children, everybody paints. Nobody's afraid. Look what I made, Mom. And then we lost that because we got afraid that someone was going to reject us. So we started playing small and we started not sharing and we started not creating, right? And whatever in your life right now, what you want more of, what you want to experience more of, what your authentic self wants more of, is going to take a risk. It's going to take putting yourself out there, doing something different, and the fear of getting laughed at or not being taken seriously or falling on your face is not serving you. It's not going to get you there. So practice on the canvas. Practice putting yourself on the canvas and showing others, and then allow that energy to gradually, it doesn't have to be like jumping off a cliff, gradually make you more and more um, bold, more fearless. And then amazing things will start to happen. Your right brain isn't scared, right? Woof. Echoing. So see, I'm just going to go around the same side of each of these pinky, purpley shapes and add a swish, whatever color this is. Okay, now I'm just going to mix that in with the blue. Other side. This is another big um, art life lesson, is let one step inspire the next. We want to think too many steps ahead. So it's like I'm trying to figure out what's on the other side of that wall over there. and Do I want to see it and is it good enough? But I can't see it yet because I'm like 20 steps away. So I know I can take this one step and that step and that step. So I take it one step at a time, and then by the time I get to the other side of the wall, I can absolutely see what's there and whether I want it or not. And um, I haven't stopped myself way too soon. Let's see how we do this. So um, with myself and with all my Creatively Fit coaches, when you work with us, you get a safe place to explore how you create and what is getting you stuck. And then all we do is help you complete a painting on the canvas. And in the process of doing that, you strengthen those mental muscles that will help you um, create into more of what you want. Okay, so now I'm going to do this pink one here. You see? It doesn't look quite circular, does it? Next, I'm going to bring that in a little bit. So the blending, a lot of times, see I'm kind of doing a triangular, and then I'm just going to blend the edges with my finger so there's not a hard... Now, did I know I was going to do this 20 seconds ago? No. You see how these spaces are all different sizes, right? So it's not perfectly symmetrical. I'm okay with that. You guys probably couldn't even tell that. But we're so critical of ourselves, right? That we, oh, it's not symmetrical. I'm not good at this. I can't do it. Whitney's always look so symmetrical. Well, I mean, I almost always share, show them in process. If you looked closely, if you looked as critically, at my paintings, as you do at your paintings, you would see that they're not symmetrical either. But 
tend to think everybody else has it figured out except us. Sometimes it's just that those people you think have it all figured out just are being more fearless. They don't have anything more figured out than you do, but they're doing it. So, like, what little thing can you try today differently? Ooh, now it's glowing. This really isn't round here. Now, if that really bothered me, which doesn't totally, but when I look at it in the camera here, right? So I can absolutely go back in. Now it looks rounder. So I'll just let that dry, and then I'll go back over it with the pink. Okay, so this is about all the talking to the screen I can do without interacting with you guys. And um, I'm so glad I did this. And um, what I'm excited about is for you guys to respond either on this thread, contact me at WhitneyFreya.com. If you're in Super Soul Flow, send me a message there or post it on the wall. You can email me, connect at WhitneyFreya.com and ask for... Um, any questions, um, give me feedback, show me, send me an image of your mandala painting, and um, I'm going to be doing more of these in the future. So, um, so I look forward to more. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for creating a mandala because thank you for going within and taking care of yourself and loving yourself and um, seeking to balance the two hemispheres, the two parts of you that are meant to just dance so beautifully. But in our modern world, the left brain has just been allowed to totally take the lead. And, um, and we think that's the only voice we have in our head. If you have not TED Talk, go to TED.com and search for Dr. Jill Taylor. I'm sure it'll come up. Her talk is called My Stroke of Insight. And listen to her, Harvard brain, brain researcher who lost all her left brain ability um, with a stroke. Took eight years to get it back. In the process of discovering her right brain, she found nirvana. Felt like she had survived so she could educate people that they have a right hemisphere and that you want to get there. So this is my portal to your right hemisphere. I am Whitney Freya. I am honored to be your muse this afternoon. For those of you watching who I know, Betty, maybe Christine, I love you guys. I'm sorry I couldn't see you. And um, I will see you all soon. Ciao. Namaste.